They would be city council members or, or city or uh, county commissioners or school board members, things like that. That way there's, there's some accountability to the public because right now the appraisal districts aren't really accountable to the public. They're accountable to the taxing units. Okay? That's an important distinction. Uh, include, you know, this tells you who, who all can appoint. And it's basically uh, anyone who taxes you will have a vote. And like I said before, they, they can combine their votes, they can split their votes. Tarrant County splits their votes. Okay? And they'll, they'll uh, vote for several different, I'll say several, maybe, maybe two, maybe even three members. So there's a lot of, of leeway given the taxing units on how they apply their vote. Here's more of the requirements. Um, they serve two-year terms, and we just went through this process. We just went through this process, so there won't be anything else for another two years. Um, unless the reform measure that the governor is talking about gets passed in the next legislature. And what will change probably will just be the fact that they need to be elected officials and therefore be accountable uh, directly to the people. Now, interestingly, the board is limited in what it can do and what it, and what it can get into. For example, we can talk about values generally. We can talk about the values of the city of North Richland Hills and why it went up and where it went up and those kind of things. But we cannot talk about your value. We cannot talk about anyone's specific value. The law requires that we not be engaged in the actual appraisal of someone's property, which is why if you disagree with your appraisal, you can't come to the board of directors. I mean, you can, but it wouldn't do you any good. There's a separate board called the ARB, the Appraisal Review Board, that you ha and, that, and that's made up of about 72 citizens in the county, and they meet in three-person three panels and hear all these uh, protests every year. As you saw from the calendar, you're going to get your appraisal in April. You have until the end of May. You have till June 1 to file a protest. And if you haven't done it by then, then you lose out for the year. And you have to accept the appraisal you were given. And so they meet for several months. These people are, are paid. It's a paid position. It's, it's, it's um, part time. And um, they're chosen by the administrative law judge of the county. And that changes from time to time within the county. So uh, that's the process. Uh, if you don't like your appraisal, you can go to the appraisal district and work with appraisal district staff. You can do it online, and you'll be working with staff there as well. Or you can go before the appraisal review board. If you're not satisfied then, then you can file a lawsuit in district court. And a lot of people do. Usually they're wealthy or, or it's a, a corporation. And um, they quite often will um, succeed in getting their appraisal award. Okay? But the appraisal review board is separate from the district board. It's appointed by a judge. All the members are appointed by a judge. The only thing the district board appoints is the chairman of the ARB. And they're there just to hear protests, okay? So when you think about the appraisal district, remember, because it's, it's big, there's over 200 employees. The appraisal board will appoint the chief appraiser and the chief appraiser is like the CEO. He's like the head guy. They hire and fire him. He hires and fires everybody else. But no one is directly accountable to the people. The directors are accountable to the people that appointed them, right? 
and the um, chief appraiser is accountable to the board. So no one in, in that, it, that whole process is elected, which is why part of the reform package that is, you know, we're hoping will, will be passed has that element where people will be, a, the, who are appointed to the board will be elected officials and at least there will be some accountability then for what happens at the appraisal district. Okay. So um, here's the, the duties of the, the CAD is the central appraisal district. That's what they're called, or county appraisal districts. It's not a real hard job unless things go wrong. Um, and then you really should do what normal boards of, uh, you know, directors on boards do, and that's ask a lot of questions and try and implement some solutions. Um, the, the biggest challenge the Tarrant Appraisal District has had ever since its inception was in 2015 when they actually started at the end of 2014, and that was a whole new computer program, um, computer platform, and it didn't work. And they made the monumentally stupid decision to, when they went live with the new system, to cut off the old system. And instead of running parallel for a while, like anyone with a brain would. And so we were all slaves to that new system that didn't work. And so you've probably read a lot of articles in the newspaper, heard a lot of, the, most of the problems have been resolved okay is it's been extremely painful but most of it's been resolved and i would say they're almost out of the woods although not not quite but at, uh, at least the on the appraisal side we seem to be getting correct information now so um but the, the point of all this is you have uh, a pretty large agency that does an extremely important job that affects every property owner in the state of Texas, or in our case, Tarrant County, uh, that is not elected and not really accountable to the people, at least not directly. And uh, I, for one, hope that changes. So with that, I'm, uh, yes, ma'am.